Hi everyone. This is going to be another revisit to the core. I had a, several questions and follow-ups from the posture workshop that I had done um, earlier this spring. And I had specific questions around what some of the muscle focus should be in many of the exercises that we do focusing on the core. So I thought I would just quickly revisit that with about seven exercises here. So as we go through each of these, it's not that we're not using all of the core, but rather I'm gonna give you one specific part of it that I know I personally like to really focus on to make sure that I have my full core fully engaged. And just really quickly as the refresher for everyone, those key component muscles for the core include our transverse abdominis in the front, obviously using obliques in the side, You've got the multifidus or multifidi, which are the stabilizing muscles between the vertebrae. At the bottom, we have the pelvic floor, and at the top, we have our diaphragm. All right, so let's get moving. So if you come onto your back on the mat, go ahead and lay all the way down. And before we do anything, just finding that awareness of where our neutral spine is, because the key challenge with many of our abdominal and core exercises is maintaining neutral pelvis and neutral spine in the position that we've placed our body, as well as many times throughout the movement. Sometimes we change it a little bit, but as you're laying here on the mat, feeling the sacrum and the tailbone rest heavy and level, and feeling where those other curvatures are in the back that rest a little heavier into the mat, and then also finding some awareness of where your spine naturally and appropriately picks up a little bit from the spine. So maintaining that sense in your back as you lift one leg into tabletop and then bring the other leg to meet it. So again, making sure that just when you did that, we didn't arch the low back or we didn't imprint the low back. So we maintained neutral spine even once we pick the legs up into tabletop. And then we're gonna bring both the hands to reach up to the ceiling. We're going into our dead bug reaches here. So I'm gonna reach the right leg about 45 or higher, and then the left arm reaches overhead. And coming back to center, and then I'm gonna switch sides. So with the arms on this, I always think of still keeping the head of my arm bone deeply seated into the shoulder socket. This is how I get the appropriately, appropriate stretch in the shoulder in the movement while also keeping that habit of maintaining shoulder stabilization. And then with the legs, you can always challenge yourself. You can try coming right at 45 or maybe even a little bit lower to see if you can still maintain that neutral spine. The moment you may feel the low back start to pick up, that's how you just know. That's the end of your range for this. We're gonna do one more each side. And coming back to center. And last one. All right, I'm gonna bring the hands back down to the mat, but I'm gonna leave the legs right where they are in tabletop. Actually, I'm gonna bring my hands onto my hip press. You can take a peek here, make sure that you're in neutral pelvis. So everything's level here. And then keeping that sense of levelness, I'm gonna take my left leg and I'm gonna make that hip opening out toward the left, but keeping the pelvis level. And then come back to center and then over to the other side. So the moment you start to feel that pelvis start to tip over toward the side that you're opening, again, it's just a sign that you found your end range. So we're still accessing the deep transverse abdominis, just like we did in that first exercise. But now we're adding a little bit into the side body, lower oblique, in order to keep that counterbalance activated to keep the pelvis level. And I'm gonna do one more on this last side. back to center, one at a time, bringing the feet down to the mat. And I'm gonna open the feet about hip distance apart here. I'm gonna be going into some chest lift. 
If it's not appropriate for you to be lifting the head and neck like this, feel free to just watch and then I'll show you another option that I enjoy doing when I know I just can't lift my head. So first one, chest lift, bringing the hands behind the head here. Feet again, about hip distance apart. You may want to bring the heels a little closer to the seat. And with my exhale, I nod chin to chest, lifting but keeping the back of the head pressing into the hands like a hammock. And then as I look down, I want to make sure I'm keeping that pelvis level, no matter how high I'm able to come up to lift. Inhale at the top and exhale as you lower down. So this next one, I'm going to do it incorrectly, just for example here. So I'm nodding chin to chest, I use my exhale, I'm lifting, I'm lifting, I'm lifting, I'm trying to find as much height as I can, but my pelvis tucked in order to find more height. So I'm going to press that back down to keep neutral spine, neutral pelvis, and with my next exhale, I lower down. So the key here for me is as I lift, I kind of whistle with the mouth a little bit as I exhale and press up because I'm really thinking about pelvic floor here as I lift up and lower. And I'm going to do one more. And lower down. All right. So the option if you're not um, lifting the head, if that is inappropriate for your body um, ongoing or whether it's just inappropriate that day, which many times happens for me. I'm going to bring both legs into tabletop, again, making sure that I've maintained neutral spine. I'm going to place the hands on the thighs just above the knees. And I'm going to just alternate pressing into the legs and countering with the knees and then release and press and release. So when you're visually looking at me, it doesn't look like I'm moving, but I'm accessing all of that deep core. And with the exhale, as I push, I do the same thing. Slight little whistle with the mouth so that I fully activate that pelvic floor. And one more. Release the arms and you can bring the feet one at a time back onto the mat. I'm going to raise the arm closest to you and roll over onto one side. We're going to go into a little bit of a side body portion of, um, of the core. So I'm going to demonstrate this on this side on the forearm. You can do it on the hand if that's available for you. When we get to the other side, I'll do it on the hand. And I'm going to progress this. So the first part, I'm going to leave the bottom knee on the mat and extend the top leg out long. And with my exhale, I'm pressing up to lift. So the key here is making sure that you keep that neutral spine line with the body here. So make sure you're not hanging down here because then we've lost the integrity of that neutral spine. I'm also making sure that I'm still in neutral pelvis. So I'm not rounding in the low back or sinking off to one side or falling forward. Keeping those hips stacked and keeping that line even all the way through the neck and the head here. And then gently coming down. I'll progress this a little bit further here for those who want it still on the forearm. Top foot staggers front, bottom foot staggers back. And now without the support of the knee, lifting up. Again, stay lifted even in that side body here and then bending the knees to help me as I come down. I'm just gonna flip over to the other side, and on this side, I'll demo using coming up on the hand. When I come up on the hand, fingers are gonna face out forward for this. I'm staggering the feet the same way I did before. And I should have mentioned this with the forearm. It, you feel it even more so when you come up on the hand, but there's the importance of the shoulder stabilization. So imagine that ping pong ball underneath the armpit and you're squeezing it as you pull the shoulder blade down the back of the rib cage and lifting up again staying lifted through here hips stay stacked so I'm not falling back or down not rolling over forward but really working in that side body oblique here and then bending the knees and assisting yourself back down all right 
So we're going to do, go on to our um, bellies, and I want to talk about some focus that I always like to think about in the um, multifidi. So bringing yourself down, resting comfortably here. The legs are going to stay active, so active that the knees pick up off the mat here. If it's uncomfortable in the low back to have the legs together, you can always bring them apart a little bit, whatever works for you. And then the other thing that's really important here is I'm imagining that this mat is super hot and I'm trying to pull my navel away from it because it's so hot. That's how I'm protecting my low back. Reaching the arms out to the sides, a little bit side diagonal, and my nose is barely hovering above the mat. With my inhale, I'm going to think of reaching the crown of my head even further toward the wall in front of me as I float my face, throat, and chest up and away from the mat. Making sure not to kink the neck here, but still keep reaching that crown of the head forward. It's as if someone's pulling you up sort of by the back of the neck. And then lifting the floating hands up and off the floor. Reach the shoulder blades down the back of the rib cage. And then with your exhale, floating the arms and hands back down. And nose comes to barely hover. We're going to do one more. Inhale as you float the face, throat, and chest up and away. Reach that crown of the head toward the wall in front of you. Floating the arms and hands up. Reaching the fingertips back towards your heels and still keeping that navel drawing back up toward your spine. And with your next exhale, lowering everything down. You can rest the forehead down on the mat. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders and pressing yourself up into quadruped. So now we've got the wrists directly below the shoulders, knees directly below the hips. If this is too much on the wrists, we can always come up to here if that feels better. So we're going to do pelvic tucks in this position isometrically. So when you're on the mat and you do your tuck, you think of imprinting into the mat and we get a little bit of that roundedness in the lumbar part of the spine. What I want to do here today is not letting yourself round. So it's just an isometric core co-contraction. So I'm using my exhale as I draw the navel back toward my spine and I've got that isometric co-contraction co co in the core so that you actually don't see any movement in the back. I still have that long line through the spine and then release into neutral. And we'll do a couple more like that. Exhale as you draw the navel back toward the spine body itself is not moving. The muscles sure as heck are working. And release. And we'll do one more. And release. All right. Expanding on this just a little bit. And with this particular movement, this is where I really truly feel every single component of my core. I'm going to curl the toes under. And with my exhale, I'm going to hover the knees up off the mat and hold. So I'm still keeping that same flat line with my back. I'm not rounding. I'm not sinking in the low back. So with this movement, I always feel everything. Transverse abdominis, multifidi. I feel my pelvic floor, and I sure as heck feel my diaphragm because I'm continuing that deep breathing even in this movement that requires that full co-contraction and then coming to rest down on the mat. If you want, you can spread the knees out a little bit, press back into a rest position, feel that length through the spine, and then we'll come back up, we'll do one more. Bring the knees so they're back directly below the hips, curl the toes under, exhale as we lift up, keep that straight, beautiful flat line through the back of the body, Reach the shoulder blades down the back of the rib cage and resting back down. Nicely done. And you are good. Thank you.